Need for Speed Shift is a racing game that tries to do a lot of things, and the good news is that it does most of them rather well. The bad news is that Shift does very little that other racers haven't done before it, and it excels at nothing. The racing, the car and track selections, the vehicle customization and damage modeling, the career mode, the online play, the opponent AI. All of these things are good, but none of them are great. Okay, uh, telemetry is recording. Take a lap and we'll get some settings dialed in for you. Depending on what kind of racing game you usually play, being thrust into the driver's seat for a flying lap at the start of Shift's career mode might go well, or very badly. There are no opponents to worry about, but getting to grip with Shift's controls can be a real challenge. How about these settings? You want to lock them in and take another lap? Like a simulation game, Shift encourages you to brake early for corners, punishes you for straying too far from the racing line, and at least by default, presents you with a steering setup that's extremely sensitive. But, like an arcade racer, Shift also rewards you for sliding around corners, for trading paint with opponents, and even for forcing those same opponents into a spin or off the track. It makes for an awkward middle ground that you might never feel completely comfortable with. Career mode is definitely where you'll spend most of your time in Shift, since it's where you unlock the game's most desirable cars. There are over 150 events in career mode, which sounds like a lot, but what's weird is that you only need to complete a fraction of them to unlock the World Tour competition that's supposed to be the pinnacle of that career. That's because the stars that unlock new competitions as you progress are earned not only for podium finishes, but also for acts of precision or aggression, and for completing bonus objectives, like mastering every corner on a circuit, reaching a certain speed on a straight, or spinning out a number of opponents. These objectives are a neat feature because they encourage you to focus on different aspects of your racecraft, and it's great that you can return to events to try for any stars that you missed. Stars probably won't be the only reason that you feel the need to repeat events in Shift, though. Even on the easiest AI setting, your opponents can be fiercely competitive, and seemingly have no problem with driving straight into you if it means they can get around a corner more quickly or gain some other advantage. Straying from or being pushed off the track and shift really slows you down, so colliding with an opponent towards the end of a long race and ruining your chances of winning can be really frustrating. Don't worry too much if it happens near the start of a race though, because the crazy rubber band AI of your opponents will cause them to slow down dramatically while you catch up. It's good that one early mistake doesn't have to mean the end of your race, but at the same time it's not particularly satisfying to beat opponents who slam on the brakes when you get in trouble. You'll find more believable opponents in the 8 player races that are supported online, but unfortunately these events aren't without their own problems. Like the career mode, online races award you experience points for acts of both precision and aggression, which means that different players often have very different racing styles. If you're a precision driver, you might pride yourself on slowing down into a corner and taking the correct racing line. But if the guy behind you is an aggressive driver, he might try to earn some points by slamming into you and using you as his brake. This can result in some pretty ugly scenes, but on this occasion it's tough to feel like the aggressive drivers are really in the wrong. Another problem with online play is the way that cutting corners is dealt with. If you cut a corner during an online race, regardless of whether or not you gained an advantage from doing so, your penalty is that you slow down to a crawl for a few seconds that feel like an eternity. That doesn't sound like a horrible idea on paper, but in practice it's frustrating not only for you, but also for any drivers coming up behind you who now have to deal with a slow-moving chicane. In amongst the occasionally frustrating races, there are other things that you can do in shift, but neither the difficult drift events or the unwieldy car customization options are really worth spending any serious amount of time with. Need for Speed Shift has a really good variety of courses and a reasonably good selection of cars to race on them. The problem is that Shift is neither an arcade racer nor a simulation. It's stuck somewhere between the two and it's unlikely to completely satisfy fans of either.